Here at the Smart Nation Innovations Conference in Singapore, startups, universities and research labs have gathered to show off new technologies they hope will one day help transform this country in its bid to become the world's first smart nation. We're here with Hope Technic now, the next generation of exoskeletons that are going to be used in a medical, military and firefighting context. So tell me about your exoskeleton. Well, um, they are actually basically developed with the military where we have a few versions. The first few versions is actually a passive system that's run on springs. So what it does is it's able to help them to elevate the amount of energy required to carry uh, heavy loads during battlefield. Um, we have also went on to the second generation exoskeleton, which is actually an active system. What it does is that it's actually hydraulic powered. It does the same purposes and to help firefighters to do rescue works much more efficiently. And um, we even have the medical purposes exoskeleton. What it does is that it's able to simulate the movement of your knee and your ankle along with your EMG waves. It's able to help patients to be able to regain and learn how to walk all over again. And for the military one, how does it improve a soldier? What can it do? Well, number one, they will be able to carry their you know, the necessary equipment which easily weighs around 20 kilos or 30 kilograms in a much more uh, efficient manner without spending so much energy. And with that, of course, you are able to walk and do your battle for a longer duration of time. Yes, and this significantly kind of improves their ability to do their fighting in the battle for you. And what stage of the development are you at at the moment? Are you, is it being tested yet? Um, yes, it's being tested. Um, but. The first version is actually still in the very initial development stage. Um, the second generation, which is passively activated, is still also in a development stage. But our rehabilitation one is more or less going to be um, commercialized very soon. So we've already got smartphones, smartwatches, and even smart fridges. How about smart wallpaper? A team at Nanyang University have developed just that. Can you tell us more about this and what it does? Yeah, uh, e essentially, uh, we can print uh, full complex electronic circuits on any substrate, including paper, aluminium, plastic film. So in the case of a wallpaper, we can print elect smart electronics on the wallpaper. For instance, what we are trying to do is to print an array of microphones so that the microphone can pick up specific speakers. So uh, for for an elderly person, the easiest way to interact with a computer is by voice. And the easiest way is to talk naturally. So you talk to the wall, and the wall, we can print loudspeakers, and the loudspeakers, it can talk back to you. So instead of lifting your handphone and trying to call someone, you can just talk to the wall or call for help. So the printed electronics is good for large format. For instance, we can make an interactive wall so if you touch the wall with five fingers, it can do certain things. If you touch with one finger, it can do certain things. So it's a little bit like your iPhone, but a big iPhone. Okay, and could you use it on Windows conceivably? Ah, yes, of course. We can print the switches which are transparent. So all you need to do is touch the window. So for instance, in the future, if you want to push the window open, you just slide the window, it physically moves. I'm with Sarah Hill now from Eon Reality, who has a new take on virtual reality. Sure. Um, so here we have um, the Oculus with a sensor here, which you can actually use to track your hands. So when you're inside the simulation, you can actually track your hands and interact with the objects in the simulation using your hands now, which was not possible earlier. So, um, so for example, in this particular simulation, when you start the simulation, you can actually use your hands to collect gifts and in, in this particular simulation, as you collect gifts, that equates to points. I think it will be used largely in the gaming as well as uh, simulation industry where aerospace, marine offshore, because it's very difficult to simulate these uh, uh, simulations in real life. So this is where I feel it would largely be used. And is it something people can buy or can they download this? It's game? a customized solution that we provide as a company. So this is something that we can provide part, as part of the uh, simulation package that you go for. This is more like a deployment platform. So this is something that we can provide as a complete solution. Singapore's Nyangyang Technological University have developed the world's first 3D printed solar powered car. We're with some of the developers here to find out more. Can you tell us about this? 
Uh, this is a uh, Asia first 3D printer car. Uh, what you are actually looking at is uh, ABS developed plastic. Um, the idea behind this project is to show the movement of traditional manufacturing technology towards to additive manufacturing technology. Uh, in the past, where if we need a material to be to be made, what we have is a, is a big block of wood and we actually cut it down to size. We, now with 3D printing technology, uh, you do not have any waste by doing so. In a sense that you actually make a piece and you do not produce a after product. You can see here, uh, it's actually electric vehicle and as well as solar power. So how long did this actually take to 3D print? It took us about three months to 3D print total of every of 120 pieces and one month to assemble them together. How fast can this car go? Okay, uh, at a regular basis, we can go as fast as 40 km per hour. That is, the battery runs 80%. And is it road legal? Are you allowed to drive this on the streets of Singapore? Uh, unfortunately, for now, no. It's not for, it's not for the streets now. 